Issue number 15 of the Power Rangers comic by Boom Studios begins with the Thunder Megazord and the Imperial engaged in battle. The Omega Rangers continue their Zord battle in space. Matt and Tommy in the White Tiger Dragon Zord are also fighting an Imperial, but they're having a hard time controlling the Zord. It's because this is Matt's first time combining the Dragon Zord with something else. Tommy apologises to Matt for being hard on him, and says to him that they're connected via the morphing grid like the Zords are. They move and think as one. So, when Matt lets it all go, the White Dragon Zord finally responds to how the Rangers want it to. With the Dragon Thunder Blast, they manage to land a powerful hit on the Imperial. To finish the Imperial off, Matt and Tommy use the Tiger Tail Strike and basically drill the Imperial to death. There's a standard monster style explosion and Matt and Tommy can only watch as the White Tiger Dragon Zord was downed following the explosion. They see a blue being emerge from the Imperial's body. At the Caves of Deception on the moon, Zartus tries to utilise the last crystal before getting shot in the back by Zordon. And then Zed arrives attacking Zordon from behind as well. With all three Altarians together back where it all started, this gives Zordon the chance to show Zed that Zartus was indeed the one manipulating them right from the beginning. Zordon puts his weapon down and tells Zed that if he honestly thinks that Zordon's to blame for what's happened to him, then he should strike Zordon down. Zed takes his staff and chooses to attack Zartus instead. So, he's now come to his senses and knows that Zartus was the traitor. Unfortunately for Zed and us the readers, Zartus says he's not here to explain to the universe why Zartus tried to kill Zed and then save him. That's annoying. In outer space, the Omega Rangers sustain hits to their Zords from the Imperial. However, the Imperial then rushes back down to Earth after learning one of them has fallen. On Earth, just as it looked like the Thunder Megazord was ready to finish their battle, the Megazord is struck by the Imperial that just returned from space. And in space, the Omega Zords are floating without power. But then, the Omega Rangers see the Blue Emissary. So, after the first Imperial was killed, the Blue Emissary was revived. And he's here to finally bring the Omega Zords together to form the Ultra Omega Zord for the first time. Going by the name, this combination is even more powerful than a Mega Zord, going straight from Mega to an Ultra Zord. In terms of appearance, it's still an alien looking Zord, keeping with the theme of the Omega Rangers and their Zords, so it's okay in terms of design. And now it's the Omega Rangers turn to return to Earth as they fly back down and stop the Imperials from destroying the Thunder Megazord. The Mighty Morphin Rangers are impressed by the new Ultra Omega Zord, and instead of combining it with the Thunder Megazord, the Omega Rangers simply get a power boost from the Thunder Megazord, as the Omega Rangers use the Omega Staff. It splits the Imperial in half, reminiscent of the Emissary getting split into two. That just leaves one Imperial standing. Back on the moon, Zartus has the upper hand in the battle against Zed and Zordon, and it's because he knows all their moves. So to even the odds, Zordon and Zed decide to fight Zartus based on what they have now. Zordon as a robot, and Zed as a sorcerer. Zed fires an energy beam at Zartus, which Zartus was able to dodge, but that just allows Zordon to tackle him and pin him against a wall. Unfortunately for Zordon, Zartus was able to break free and knock Zordon away. Back to the last surviving Imperial, it becomes what the Rangers call a Super Imperial. With this new form, made up of the Fallen Imperials, the Super Imperial is able to knock the Ultra Omega Zord away and blast both the White Tiger Dragon Zord and the Thunder Mega Zord away. It looks like this Imperial will be able to renew the Earth. That is, until someone arrives saying they got the perfect timing because the Horrid wouldn't want to miss this event. And so we see the Horrid descend. So then, is Dracon here to save the day? This was really enjoyable, and now I see why the Horrid were in the earlier issues. It was basically paving way for this. If it really is Dracon coming to save the day, why is he doing it? And which side will he be on after the Altarian War? if he lives.